Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Today we've got a game theory struggle for you. We're talking about Nash equilibrium, specifically pure strategy Nash equilibrium, as well as introducing game theory overall. Make sure you like and subscribe if these videos are helpful to keep up with our other game theory struggle videos, as well as other econ struggles. Now today we are going to start off by talking about strategic thinking, strategic interactions. Then we will get into talking about the concept of game theory. What exactly is a game? Then we will run through a couple of example games and talk about best responses and get to the concept of a pure strategy Nash equilibrium. And then at the very end, we will introduce the idea that sometimes we don't always have pure strategies and we will deal with those implications in other videos. So let's get started right off the bat. We're talking about strategic thinking. What exactly is strategic thinking? What are strategic interactions? Now, strategic thinking or strategic interactions are something you do every day, whether or not you realize it or not. So what is an example of a strategic interaction? Well, a classic example of a strategic interaction is a board game. Now let's think about a simple quote unquote board game of tic-tac-toe. Tic-tac-toe, you see your opponent place an X or an O on the board and you are trying to think about what your next move should be given what you think your opponent should do or what your opponent would do if you made that move. Now there are many combinations of tic-tac-toe. Tic-tac-toe is more of a complicated game than we are going to get into here but that is something that you can keep in mind when you're trying to imagine what is a strategic interaction. Another type of strategic interaction is an auction, trying to figure out what your bid should be. We'll see examples of auctions later on. And another type of strategic interaction is to figure out whether or not to buy a product you don't know everything about. For example, the classic example in game theory is buy or not buy a used car. It's used, you have no idea how many accidents have been in, what its maintenance record is, and you're trying to figure out whether or not to buy it. All of these examples will come up in future videos, but we are just getting thinking about what strategic interaction is. So now let's talk about what is a game. This is important. You will see fancy definitions as you go through your game theory class. So for right now, we are going to talk more conceptually about what is a game. So a game will have two or more players. If you're just playing by yourself, there is no strategic interaction. So you need at least two players. Each player should have some potential actions. If I'm playing a game, but I can't do anything, that is not a very useful game to talk about. So I need to have at least, so greater than or equal to one possible actions. Otherwise, again, the game is not very fun, not very useful to talk about. And the other thing we need to talk about for a game is that each set of actions has a payoff. What does that mean? So if we go back to our classic example of tic-tac-toe, that means that if I do a certain set of actions and you as my opponent play a certain set of actions, one of us will win the game or we will tie. That win or tie result is the payoff that we would refer to when we define it as a formal game. So each set of actions has a payoff and these are the very classic examples of what a game is defined as. So let's play a game. Let's talk about a game and let's use a game that maybe is familiar to us that you may have played. So let's think about a house. Here's my poorly drawn house. The house is relatively simple. It's got an upstairs or a second floor and a downstairs or a first floor. And I'm going to put two people, two people are going to be playing this game. And I'm going to label this person the hider. And I'm going to label this person as the seeker. So we are going to play the game of hide and seek. And each person can choose to go upstairs or downstairs. If they both go upstairs, then the hider loses, the seeker wins. And if they go on different floors, then the seeker does not find the hider and the hider wins. So that is, this is a very simple two player game. We are going to represent this game in something called matrix form. 
also sometimes referred to as normal form. And all normal form or matrix form is, it's gonna be a matrix of potential actions and the payoffs of those combinations of actions. So I'm gonna put hider over here and hider can go upstairs or downstairs. I'm going to put seeker up here and he can go upstairs or downstairs. It does not matter where I put hider or seeker. This is just how I'm going to write this game. Now, if hider goes upstairs and seeker goes upstairs, then the hider will lose and the seeker wins because they both went to the same floor. And similarly, if they both go downstairs, then the hider loses and the seeker wins. Note that I have written the hider's payoff first. The person on the row gets their payoff written first. And the person on the top, the column player, gets their payoffs written second. Now, alternatively, if the hider goes upstairs and the seeker goes downstairs, then the hider wins. And similarly, if the hider goes downstairs and the seeker goes upstairs, then the hider is not found. The seeker loses and the hider wins. And we'll just assign one point for winning and zero points for losing. Now, let's think about this problem in terms of best responses. So let's introduce the idea of best responses. Best responses hopefully make some intuitive sense, but let's make this a little more concrete. So the definition I'm going to use for best responses is best responses will complete this sentence. So best response would say if seeker goes wherever they go, maybe they go upstairs, maybe they go downstairs, I as hider am best off going wherever. So let's do an example. So if seeker goes upstairs, then I as hider am best off going downstairs, which means my best response to seeker going upstairs is for me to go downstairs. Now, you might imagine this is not seeker's best response to going down is not to go up because seeker wants to go to the same floor. So for right now, let's put that game of hide and seek on hold and let's talk about a new game and let's talk about mutual best responses, meaning both people are best responding to each other. So this is going to be the concept of mutual best responses, which I will abbreviate with BR, and mutual best responses are also known as Nash equilibrium. So when we talk about Nash equilibrium, we are thinking about our both players best responding to each other. And the new game, so this is a new game that I'm going to introduce. This is a game that is very common in game theory. This is the game of Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde, two people that have been arrested, two robbers, and they are put into separate interrogation rooms and they can either blab to the police, they can confess about the other person, or they can stay silent. They are not able to communicate to each other. They are in separate interrogation rooms. So they are not allowed to collude or cooperate with each other if they are choosing this simultaneously. So let's put Bonnie over here. And we said, well, Bonnie can confess or stay silent. And Clyde is also playing this game. He can confess or he can be silent. And we will put together the matrix or the normal form of this game, and we will assign some payoffs. So if they both confess, if they both rat each other out, then they are going to each receive five years in jail, and we will denote the five years in jail with a minus five, assuming that being in jail is not really where you want to be. If Bonnie confesses and Clyde stays silent, then Bonnie gets to go free, and Clyde takes the hit for all of their crimes, and he goes to jail for 10 years. Similarly, if Bonnie stays silent and Clyde confesses, Bonnie takes a hit for everything, goes to jail for 10 years, and Clyde gets off free. And if they both stay silent, then they are both convicted of lesser charges and they get a year in prison each. Now, this is what we call a symmetric game. Notice that these payoffs are the same. So the silent confess doesn't matter who confesses and stays silent. Whoever confesses gets zero. Whoever is silent is minus 10, which is reflected in that these payoffs here are flipped. Now let's talk about some best responses. We've already said that a best response 
completes the sentence, if my opponent does this, then I, as the other player, am best off doing this strategy. So let's think about it in the context of this game. Let's first think about Clyde. So Clyde says, well, if Bonnie chooses to confess, then I, if I stay silent, I'm looking at 10 years in jail. And if I confess, I am only gonna get five years in jail. Therefore, I, as Clyde, want to confess. And if Bonnie is going to stay silent, then if I confess, I get zero years in prison. And if I stay silent, then I get one year in prison. So I am better off confessing because zero is better than negative one. In terms of Bonnie's situation, Bonnie is going to have a very similar thought process. She's going to say, well, if Clyde is going to confess, then I'm looking at either five years in prison or 10 years in prison. I'd much rather have five years in prison than 10. And if Clyde is silent, then I'm looking at either one year in prison or zero years in prison. And I much prefer zero years in prison to one year in prison. So notice that this confess confess has a two underlines. So it's a mute, this is what we call a mutual best response. This means that our proposed Nash equilibrium, which is equal to our mutual best response is confess. Let me write that a little nicer is confess, confess. Notice that I did not write negative five, negative five. Negative five, negative five are the payoffs associated with this Nash equilibrium, but the actual equilibrium is the decisions that are made and the decisions that are made, the choices that are made are body confesses and Clyde confesses. Now, notice another thing here. Notice that if we're looking at Bonnie's decision, she never wants to stay silent. She would always rather confess then be silent regardless of what Clyde does. This is what we call a dominant strategy. So a dominant, dominant strategy is a strategy or a decision that is always better regardless of opponent's choice. And similarly, for Clyde, Clyde would always can rather confess than silent because this five, this negative five is better than this negative 10, and this zero is better than this negative one. So Clyde is never going to be silent. He also has a dominant strategy to confess. Now, this is, as we said, a pure strategy Nash equilibrium. What, does, what would it mean to say it's not a pure strategy Nash equilibrium? So let's talk about a new game. And we're just going to introduce this idea. We're not going to take it all the way through. This will be in a future video, but I just want to introduce this idea while we're here. So let's talk about a new game. And this new game is going to be very familiar. This is the game of rock, paper, scissors. This is a game people play all the time, and we are going to turn it into a normal form game. So let's take you, and then maybe you're playing rock, paper, scissors with a friend. So you can choose rock, paper, or scissors, and they can choose rock, paper, or scissors. And we'll draw some lines just to make it a little cleaner. And then we'll talk about how we talk about these payoffs and just highlight some best responses to show that there are no pure strategy Nash equilibriums in rock, paper, scissors, because if there were, you or your friend would play rock all the time or paper all the time or scissors all the time. And we know intuitively that that is not the way that we play rock, paper, scissors. So if we both play rock, we tie, and we'll just say we get zero, say zero for tie or loss and one for a win. If you play rock and your friend plays paper, then you lose and your friend wins. But if you play rock and your friend plays scissors, then you win and your friend loses. Similarly, paper beats rock, paper ties paper, paper loses to scissors, scissors loses to rock, scissors beats paper, and scissors ties scissors. Now, if I underline your best responses in purple, if your friend is playing rock, then you want to play paper. If your friend is playing paper, then you want to play scissors. And if your friend plays scissors, then you want to play rock. If we think about it from the perspective of your friend, if you are playing rock, then your friend wants to play paper. 
If you are playing paper, then your friend wants to play scissors. And if you are playing scissors, your friend wants to play rock. Notice that we have not underlined both numbers in any given square. So there is no pure strategy Nash equilibrium to this game. There is going to be what we call a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. And we will deal with that in a, another video. If this was helpful, if you understood a pure strategy Nash equilibrium better because of this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And we will see you next time for another case of econ struggles.